Hey everybody, welcome to Gallery SS Photo. This is where I do videos that have nothing to do with what I'm shooting, but I have a new Samsung S7. Now, the S8 is out, but I got an S7 because it's not a bad deal, and it has the Pro capability just like the iPhone. Now, one thing that the Pro capability gives you is it lets you control the shutter speed, the white balance, and most importantly, it lets you shoot raw. So, I went out, I didn't have a model for this shot, but I saw this glass with a really cool reflection. This is taken in Yaletown in Vancouver, British Columbia. It's a very hip area to go and have a drink, grab some food, and just generally hang out. Fantastic spot. And here what I saw is the reflection of Yelltown. And somewhere in there, there's me. I think there's... I think I'm right there in the corner trying to take the picture. And what I want to see is I want to see how much better would my settings on ISO 125 that you can see right here and at f1.7, which is the default aperture, and 1 to 50th of a second in Pro Mode in RAW file will look. Now, first things first, if you notice... I'm seeing distortion. Now this distortion you can see right here in this glass leaning way out of the way and this glass just being pulled way off to the side. This is a very blatant and obvious type of distortion but I was pleasantly surprised that the lens correction features within Photoshop actually have a preset for Samsung S7. Now let's take a look at lens correction for this particular shot and see if it'll do it from camera raw. So now this is at the raw import stage. I'm gonna go enable profile corrections automatically it makes that my camera is a Samsung Galaxy S7 rear camera not edge alright and profile so there we go it's figured out that I'm going to use the Adobe profile now I can do some additional corrective amount so this is zero distortion this is 200% distortion as you can see what it does is it's trying to address that camera bulge in the center. Now, where would this make a difference, this distortion slider? This would make a difference if you're adjusting for when you've zoomed in in that shot. Now, I kind of know how the glass is supposed to look like, and I think it's supposed to look a bit like this. I can also look at the lines at the table, this line right here and this line right here, to make sure that it looks as straight as possible. Right now, there is definitely a dip right there and I cannot blame that on the wood because that definitely looks like a dip to me so let's see if I can straighten that out a little bit I think right around here it gets too distorted right around here it looks fairly straight the other options that I have here of course is I can adjust my white balance so I can take the white balance picker tool and pick the white balance so what looks like a gray point here to me a gray point if I were just messing around would probably be that fork right there depending on where the lights coming from there you go, that's a little bit warm. Let's try one of these reflections because there's direct sunlight hitting it. Yep, there's not enough light. Let's find a different spot, maybe here, here. So it tints quite a bit. How about there? Nope. How about that? I think this is my face right here. <laughs> All right, so you can definitely make some adjustments here. Let's get into sharpening. So let's go back in and uh, zoom in on this glass, handheld. Nothing too fancy. The focus point is actually right there on this glass, so it's not too bad. I used a manual focus point. And the noise profile at 100%, if we look really close, there is definitely some noise at even 125 ISO. But this is a mobile phone, so what do you expect? So let's see if I can get rid of any of that noise without losing too much of our photo detail. So that around there looks a little too much. We can shrink this down a bit more. Uh, now, I did see that in some dark areas, there is some color noise, but I do not see it in this picture. There's some right there in this corner, so we can try to adjust that as well. Maybe this is at zero, and there's that noise level, so if we bring it down to about there, see if we can get rid of those specks. So go from there to about there. There we go. But I still see a ton of distortion. And that just speaks to the type of a lens that you have. Really, the distortions everywhere. We can adjust our highlights and exposure. How much can I step this up without losing too much detail? I can do quite a bit here, and I can bring it down quite a bit. The dynamic range is actually fairly impressive because if I go back to zero, this is where I shot it at right there. I can compress it down quite a bit, and the detail is definitely coming out. So there is still information that's recorder right there in the raw mode now what about shadows let's see how well 
we can find out details in the shadows here. So I guess we're going to look at this set of windows here. And of course, I am overexposing quite a bit. But from zero to there's not a heck of a lot of detail to bring it out. There's quite a bit of information trapped in the shadows as well. I think the case with this camera, though, on the Samsung S7 is to pull in to, well, I would say slightly overexpose and then underexpose because shadow noise is definitely there. And there is some recovery for highlights. Clarity, we can crank up the clarity, bring out the detail, and of course the background, not too affected by that. Same thing with the blacks. Let's take a look at the blacks, how those handle. Blacks look pretty good. And can we crank up the shadows in this particular picture? Now we shouldn't do too much. So basics are that there's definitely a lot of distortion in this glass. This doesn't even look like a glass to me. It gets pulled off right into the corner here, but let's see if we can do any post-production to correct that. So let's open up this image. So here's our raw file. Here is our glass. I think the simplest thing here would be just to um, copy, paste, and uh, if we do a little bit of warping, that might do the trick. So let's do that. I'm going to duplicate the layer. And let's try to warp it and see if I can make it look a little bit more like a glass. And if I were a glass, I guess I would be shaped like that. And I probably wouldn't be leaning out all the way that way. Of course, this is not meant to be absolutely perfect, and that's not what I'm trying to go for, but I'm just trying to make sure that the glass looks like a glass. And this is really the magic of Photoshop. The other glass right here, that's definitely distorted as well. If you look at that one there, that does not look like a glass until I bring it out quite a bit, and here I'm going to have to crop, which means I'll lose that detail. Now, the distortion is also occurring right there where the wall is just leaning way out of the way. But uh, let's let's see what I can do here. So just for everybody, if you're taking pictures with your camera phone, this is the kind of distortion you're getting. You're going from something like that to maybe me making it a bit better with that. Again, let's grab this here, and uh, I'm going to copy and paste this area and see if I can straighten out that beam, because that beam is just way out of the way. Let's go copy, paste, and make sure it's sliding up, which I don't think that it is. I think it's... Slightly out of the way, yeah, there it is. So I better put it back where it belongs. Now, this is, of course, not reasonable for anybody to do if you're doing any sort of post-production with your photos just because you've taken a picture with your phone. But since I went down the path of messing around with the raw file, I might as well try to correct this. So again, let's, uh, let's warp this. And this should be a vertical beam because that's usually how buildings are built, right? You can tell me otherwise, but... In my humble opinion, this should be kind of a vertical beam, so I guess it would look sort of like that. Let's see how that looks. That looks a bit better. I'm going to throw on a crop tool here and crop this image, this glass. I'm sorry, you are way too distorted. This looks all right. Let's get to the bottom of the shot here. I did some editing. This glass is just completely still messed up. I mean, I'd have to do a serious bit of correction here maybe i can do that here just let's just try that out i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste this glass here did it shift i bet you it shifted all right so if i were this glass and i wanted to look like that i probably wouldn't want to be that i'd probably want to look a bit straighter uh let's step back up step here paste here's our glass and let's warp it again this is a lot of warping just to get a shot eh Look at that. So the bottom of the glass is really not pretty. I guess a glass kind of looks like that, right? Come on, glass. You're probably wondering why you're watching this video. I guess you like me manipulating stuff in Photoshop. And uh, sort of that. Yeah, let's make sure the edges are not too messed up. How bad is it? Realistically, if this is going to go to Instagram, no one will care. I'm saying this is probably good enough. If I really want it to be a pain, I could even try to correct the base of this glass here. I'll grab this portion right there, copy it, paste it. Let's uh, warp transform that, because that doesn't look quite like a glass either. Probably should kind of look like that. Just watch out for your edges. That probably should look like that. This should look like that. 
right? Is that how a glass looks like? Let's take a look. Yeah, see, there's even distortion right here at the table level. So, I think I've corrected my glass. It looks a bit more like a glass. I'm going to apply image here, image, apply image, and what this will do is this will take all the work that I've done and stack it into a brand new layer. So now I can hide all these steps in the middle, and we went from that, that looks pretty distorted, to that. And if I really want to be super awesome, I can just get in here, and I can correct this little piece of wood here, let Photoshop do its thing, and then I can even straight try to mess around and straighten these lines out because they're definitely not perfect. Probably get myself a clone stamp tool, and let's just paint this in real quick. Just make a straight line here because, you know, no matter what Alan Thick says, blurred lines are not my thing. Yay, that looks fairly straight, right? As a bit of a Photoshop enthusiast, I can't let myself have that happen, so I'm just going to clean that up a bit. Fix this little corner there. Okay, I think this is close enough. I probably should fix this line here, too. Hey, there's uh, fireworks going on on the side. Hello, there you go. Photoshop, do your magic. Just, okay, fine. You know what? I'll just paint it in. Done. Mission achieved. So we went from that to that. Ta-da! So there you go. Samsung S7. Good camera. Can shoot raw, but if you drag it into Photoshop, you better start doing some correcting because you're going to end up with quite a bit of distortion until you fixed it up and now you have yourself a wine glass with the reflection of Yelltown. All right, so after all that messing around, Samsung S7, awesome camera, but needs a little bit of correction when it comes to distortion. And then I'll do a test with, of course, the Samsung S8 next. But if you have any questions about Photoshop and getting any photos processed, you can always subscribe to this channel and send me questions and concerns via my website at gallerysscom and, of course, on Facebook at gallerysscphoto